Welcome to Merkaba Chakras, where we talk Buddhism in the fifth dimension. Welcome to another podcast episode of Merkaba Chakras. I'm your host, Vaughn Galt. And today we discuss the untapped six senses of humanity with author Terje G. Simonson. In Buddhism, six senses is a natural element to our spiritual identity. As we amplify our energy fields, we activate more and more six senses. As the world steamrolls further into the fifth dimension consciousness and higher with earth and source, the new human with a variety of six senses will be common day. So I asked Terje to answer some questions about our potential Star Trek reality where consciousness exploration is normal. So Terje, welcome to Merkava Chakras. Thanks a lot and thanks for having me. Yeah, I just had so much fun with this topic and I couldn't wait to get you on because I know you've written many, many books um, in the paranormal and in six, is, six senses. And, um, you know, this is going to be a common thing in our society in these higher dimensions. And so I, I, I only thought of one reality where this was normal common day to do consciousness, consciousness exploration, exploration of how it comes into different forms um, as we explore space and consciousness. And um, as we become intergalactic in the near future and come across uh, different beings within the within source, they may have different six senses. So I just thought Star Trek. That's, that's just Star Trek. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I couldn't think of any other reality where this is that it falls within that um, that paradigm. So before mm -hmm. we dig into your work and how we relate it to this very fun topic, can you tell us your story for how you even got involved in writing about these topics well uh like most children i when i was a kid i was interested in fairy tales you know and uh important part of many fairy tales all over the world are magic in different forms mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, also in Norwegian folk tales, there are quite a lot of magic. And I also read these uh, Arabian folk tales, you know, uh, One Thousand and One Nights. Mm -hmm. So I was very fascinated by the magical element. And also, um, when I was a bit uh, become a bit older, I became a member of a Christian youth club. And uh, some of those people, you know, uh, they spent quite a lot of time uh, in prayer and meditation and that. And they told me about strange phenomena from time to time. And I trusted those people. So I had no reason not to believe them. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so it was a kind of curiosity. And also later, um, uh, some members of my, my grandfather, for instance, he uh, was an engineer. And he told me that he uh, many times would be able to hear my grandmother coming from town uh, about half an hour before it happened. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, it became a very regular experience for him. Uh, so regular that he uh, went to the stove to start making dinner uh, when he... <laughs> uh, That's yes. a great connection. Uh, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, and uh, if my grandmother, for instance, went to uh, uh, speak with, uh, have a cup of coffee with a friend or something, and therefore become two hours later that uh, afternoon, he would feel that also, you know. So, um, so they, uh, and, uh, and as I said, he was a very rational man and engineer. Mm -hmm. So when he told me that, why should I disbelieve it, you know, and mm -hmm. he was not part of any kind of uh, <laughs> cult or new age thing or something like that, a very down to earth uh, person. Uh, and uh, also, so I became more interested and also met some people, you know, quite intuitive people that mm -hmm. somehow were able to demonstrate these phenomena. Uh, of course, not faultless and flawless, there are many, but still uh, more than just chance, you know. Well, what, who were some of the people that you met in your life um, growing up that aside from your grandparents, who obviously had a very close connection to each other's energy field who are some of uh, people? yeah for instance uh, an aunt and a cousin of mine uh 
they told, for instance, my cousin had visited an other, other town and had a very specific experience there with a specific person that had a specific outfit. And mm -hmm. uh, when she called uh, home to her mother uh, in my hometown to tell about this event, mm -hmm. uh, my, uh, uh, my aunt, uh, her mother then had been uh, laying asleep, dreaming. And mm -hmm. what she has dreamt was the, the exact same event that my cousin had experienced in this other town. So, mm -hmm. uh, so she was not surprised, you know, because, and even so detailed, uh, uh, my cousin had dreamt of meeting a very special person, long story, this I will just make the short version here. And uh, this person had a very special lipstick, a white lipstick, you know, uh -huh. and that's not very common. Uh, but, no. But very, <laughs> no, no, usually it's uh, red or some kind of purple or something, but not, uh, you know, bright white. Uh, and uh, as, uh, that was kind of what I call an identification detail. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when she discussed the event with uh, my aunt, uh, who had been sleeping and dreaming, uh, my aunt also said, ah, and yes, she had a white lipstick, you know, so it's a very mm -hmm. special, uh, mm -hmm. even in such details, the event was, say, uh, congruent. So, uh, as I said, with my grandfather and grandmother and these aunts, and also my aunt was uh, the same aunt here, I was... Um, in, in bed with, uh, uh, with my uncle, her husband, and uh, my uncle had uh, gone to sleep, but she was reading a history book. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, while she was reading the history book, my uncle was start, starting to uh, speak in his sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, my aunt was then uh, reading the text uh, uh, under an illustration. And uh, the words that came out from my sleeping uncle's mouth were the exact same words that was written under this picture in the book. Yeah, so, so let me ask you so, something. Is it mostly just family? Is it just in families or does it also within other people who are not part of the same family <laughs> DNA? Uh, Mainly it's a uh, family and good friends or lovers, people with a strong personal connection. But mm. when you, if you meet with professional good psychics, they are able to tune into almost everyone. But uh, the person I usually consult if I want a, a, a pers uh, psychic perspective on m my life, uh, she said that there are some people she is not able to read at all. They are somehow Why? close. To, uh, she feels that is an ethical thing uh, because if a person very strongly uh, does not want to be read, it's like uh, you don't uh, open a diary to a person that do right. not that, that that's, that's improper in a way. Right. And she is a very ethical person, this psychic talk. So she feels that person has resistance, and somehow she respects that resistance. Right. Right. And, you know, that's, that's a really good point because I, I wonder about that too. Um, cause whenever I go to like psychic fairs and yes. just to go, you know, crystal fairs and so forth, um, I will go through different mediums and psychics and, um, channelers and just kind of go through mm. their booth and, um, I, I will try, okay, this one, I want to, I want to get it on this, um, perspective or reading and then. In this one, I'm going to try to just open. I'm. It's going to. I'm going to blank my my thoughts, and mm -hmm. they don't get anything. Is it mm -hmm. so that so is is the ability to be to kind of send out your information through your energy field? Is that mm -hmm. something that is either conscious or unconscious? Can you do it? Can you turn it on uh, and off? Uh, I think. Uh, I think you do it uh, unconsciously more or less mm -hmm. all the time. But as you said, if you consciously want to blank it, uh, or if the psychic is a very, say, ethical person, then there will be not this uh, exchange of information. Mm -hmm. And also, I, I will tell you, um, I once interviewed, uh, I write about uh, that in chapter two in my book, uh, the probably most famous uh, parapsychological researcher in Eastern Europe during the Cold War era, Professor mm -hmm. Georgi Lodzano from Bulgaria. He mm -hmm. had a uh, personal laboratory with 30 people, you know, psychologists, engineers, and right. so Yes. So he was really into this. And he had also a very famous medium uh, called Baba Vanga. And she mm -hmm. was e extreme in uh, her competence in reading people. Uh, but once uh, he tried, um, when he met her uh, very early uh, in uh, the, say, um, what is called in the friendship, uh, he tried uh, to uh, confuse her by imagining 
uh, he was an other person. So mm-hmm. somehow he took on the life story of a friend of his mm-hmm. and, not, and not being himself in, um, say, mentally in her presence. And then she said, oh, something is wrong here. I can't get your story. So, so uh-huh. it clearly it, it was possible to, say, make a kind of mental shield or what is called uh, Stoysen, or would be Norwegian. Uh, you know, when you have a radio signal that right. is actively distorting the other radio signals and he was doing that that and it seems to work quite well so so it's not a, say a fail proof process this there mm. are many uh, many things that some uh, for good or worse can stop the flow of information yeah that's that's very that's very that's very interesting because um you know, I, I work with six senses clients and one of the six senses that that many of them come into is the ability to kind of tune into everybody's story. Yes. And they don't necessarily want to um, mm-hmm. to understand or know. It's almost kind of like information overload. It, yes. it could be overwhelming. Yes. And so they need to learn to have boundaries on themselves so they don't just automatically pick up because most people are automatically sending out their yes. signals of yes. all their their worries and their paranoia are just sending it out. But exactly. um, but but you know just like the person who naturally is able to pick up the information of other people projecting unconsciously mm-hmm. their thoughts or emotions um that person who can read it naturally or come into the sixth sense can create a boundary so that mm-hmm. they no longer hear the white mm-hmm. it becomes white noise yes. um but at Good. the same time um other for other people if they don't want it to be picked up or read they can just basically empty their mind empty their thoughts mm-hmm. be in the mm-hmm. present moment and that clears up and then it's, you're not an open channel. Mm. So mm. I, I, I tested that out and I was, I was curious what you, you thought about that because um, mm. oftentimes when I work with Sixth Sense clients who have this ability or come yes. into this overwhelming yes. ability, it's, it's fun at first. And then yes. it's not so much fun. It's a blessing exactly. in disguise. I, I, I will tell you, uh, the, say, consultant I use uh, most often, uh, the lady I told you, she has this problem when she goes to a shop, for instance, and mm-hmm. she uh, enters a queue. She starts to get five uh, life stories at once streaming into her consciousness, you know. Yeah. And so she, she really has to work to, to block it out. Yeah. Uh, and also an other friend of mine, um, he is partly psychic, partly healer. And mm-hmm. uh, he told me when he was younger this was a really problem for him um uh, and because when he was uh, in a football match he was sitting next to a person and suddenly mm-hmm. he's starting to feel his back aching you know and oh, of course yeah, that's the yes, other thing. yes uh, yes and they feel uh, the and, pains of other people and it's not even their pain and that could be overwhelming exactly. Exactly, and also in a in a for instance, if you go to a party and the person left you, you have a headache. You take up this headache, and so so mm-hmm. he told me it took some years before he learned to balance this uh, with grounding. So he went mm-hmm. l- lots going for a walk in forests, you know, quiet places, and and feel his own say heaviness towards the ground and and getting grounded really that's very important uh, also there's a classic work in this field um uh, by this western esoteric teacher called diane fortune you mm-hmm. might know about that it's called psychic self-defense and also the works of a uh, uh, say more modern master uh, w e butler uh, he has also written about uh, psychic self-defense uh, the normal uh, say visualization is to surround yourself with for instance a golden egg like mm-hmm. that uh, or mm-hmm. if you feel blue is more calming you can have a very uh, pretty blue uh, egg mm-hmm. around you uh, so somehow to 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 clear your aura of of this intruding uh, so but but very often um if um, not everybody ought to be psychic because uh, i will say uh, i will was consulted by a person who had been committed to psychiatric uh, hospital mm. and he was schizophrenic but uh, very sensitive also in a positive way uh, it was not just chaotic uh, chaotic is very say a, a true sensitive also so when we discussed i asked him some test questions and he was able to t- give me answers for that you know so he was right. really on his way to develop full psychic abilities and he asked me how can i develop more of that this abilities and i said do you think that's a good thing to do right now? Because it can be too much for you, too much information. Yeah, and it can so be a so. spiritual crisis. You can come into a spiritual crisis. Exactly. If he's already exactly. in the psych ward and he's having a hard time. Yes. 
So, so I uh, said, uh, go for a walk in the forest, take care of your dog, you know, do everything that can ground you. Uh, and also the old Zen saying, you know, before uh, enlightenment, you should carry water and uh, chop wood, you know, and after enlightenment, you should also carry water and chop wood. So, yeah, uh, so that's always, so true. It is. So always stay grounded if you want to develop these abilities. Yeah. Well, see, it's not just a matter of wanting to develop these abilities as people. I know this for a fact in Buddhism, as yes. people um, get more spiritual and they raise their frequency and their energy much more. Mm -hmm. um, it is going to happen naturally. It's a natural. It's like a growth spurt. It's just natural. It's like going to the adolescence at first. It's, uh, it's a little bit overwhelming it's hard to deal with your new abilities etc but mm. then you you learn these different ways to cope with your new um mm. growth spurt or your new body or your new ability um mm. it can be debilitating um mm. and people don't really quite understand what the concept of a spiritual crisis is but uh, when these people go through it it is it, it is too much and a lot of these um telepathic or empathic sensitives mm. These people typically don't live in the cities as much because it's just mm. too much people in the city. And exactly. It's just, exactly. It's information overload until they can learn mm. to. And mm. so if they, um, many of them have children that is in the family line. So they mm. have, they slowly learn to adapt to it. Now your family, when you were growing up, did your family live in a very dense city or did they live in the suburbs? No, we live in a small city. Uh, mm. uh, my grandfather, a somewhat bigger city, but my aunt and my cousin, we were quite small city. It's ten, mm. about 10,000 people. So it's, it's that's not even small. a city. So it's not like, it's not like, you know, you're not in a metropolitan, like Los Angeles or New mm. York, you, you know, mm. so you're, you're in a mm. small town. Yes, and it's also very close to the sea, so it's uh, say it's not this industrial uh, area mm -hmm. around. Uh, and also, uh, they planted uh, more than hundred years ago uh, a very big forest with pine trees also here. So it's it's a, 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 what you will say kind of a rural district. It's very rural. It's interesting that you bring that up too, because I found that a lot of the people that I um, have come across who have budding six senses, either they live near water, near a lot mm. of forest, near you know a, a very rural area, um, for you know just getting in nature, or they eventually move out of the dense city because. Mm. You know, it's just it's just easier for their way of life to just ex they'll go in for work or whatnot, and then they go back to their their um, small town or their um, suburban um, lifestyle, which is a little bit more slow and a little, mm. a little more easy to to manage. Because if you're in a city where there's like a million people and there's a million thoughts all of a sudden all mm. all over the place, and if you are mm. still working on dealing with this, um, then it could be too much. So and, until you perfect it. Yes, clearly. And also the physical noise, you know, lots of honking on the casts and uh, TV sets and, uh, and uh, the noise of the city, uh, not just the psychic noise, but also the physical even will somehow, uh, say, irritate your nervous system very often. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's, let's relate this to um, the fun topic of the Star Trek series. So in Star Trek, um, the TV series, there are many alien races with unique six senses, such as Deanna Troy. You remember that, that TV series growing up that you watch, Star Trek? Uh, I know about it, but it was not part of the, say, common Norwegian social uh, stock. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, uh, Star Wars, I know quite a lot better, uh, you know. But I, yeah, I, uh, yeah so uh, peripherally, I also know Star Trek, yes. Mm. Okay, good. So the counselor, Deanna Troy, she comes from a race who's telepathic and empathic, just like what we'll be discussing mm. about um, yes, these abilities yes. and in people who are who have these six senses. Now, in her culture, they actually train their six senses. Mm. So um, you and I have been talking about different ways in which people with six senses are coping and training themselves to be able to mm. live with this ability that is part of their existence. Is mm. this where humanity will end up? 
What are your yeah, thoughts very, on that? It's a very interesting uh, question. Uh, I could refer to this uh, quite great spiritual teacher from Austria, Rudolf Steiner. You know, uh, he uh, made a creator of ant anthroposophy. Uh, it was a branch of theosophy. And he also developed uh, pedagogic uh, means, you know, uh, the Waldorf school and all that kind. Uh, mm -hmm. Ste Steiner thought that in uh, see, primordial times, all humans had this more or less, like animals they have these abilities clearly dogs and cats mm -hmm. and so because it's part of consciousness a basic consciousness really uh, so that was kind of uh, what Steiner's say uh, idea about uh, cultural development is that somehow uh, humanity has uh, for a period to lose that direct uh, contact with spirit and go into the material world you know with uh, scientific project uh, intellectual uh, development uh, being in in uh, yes in in the physical uh, uh, on the say on the physical premises in a way not just escaping into um, to to the spirit when things get difficult but solving real physical problems in mm -hmm. the physical world that is Steiner's idea about that but then uh, at a certain point in time which is our time age of Aquarius and so uh, then we should start to uh, say regain connection with the spirit world mm -hmm. but then on a much more say discerning and conscious level uh, than say they had in, in uh, primordial times so that mm -hmm. is somehow a long uh, that is what Steiner imagined is the human cultural history uh, say the spiritual aspect of human cultural history really and I found that to be interesting and I, I was quite surprised first when I heard about that because we had a, an extremely say impressive psychic in Norway at mm -hmm. that time. He died in 1968 called Marcelo Hogan. And uh, he was fantastic. Uh, and lots of doctors had have attested to his abilities and so. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I was quite surprised because Steiner criticized him and said, you have the abilities people had uh, 10,000 years ago. You don't right. have the mo modern kind of clairvoyance. And Marcelo, he was a kind of, he was uh, not say, uh, he was not a kind of scholar. He was not an academic, you know. So he become quite hurt by that because he felt somehow devaluated by Steiner. But Steiner said, uh, it's nothing wrong with what you have, but you also need to read philosophy and, you know, uh, become more, say, uh, conscious about these abilities, not just living in them, you know, you have to really know how to discern and to, how to use them. So that might be um, our task in this time that somehow we have to deal with this, but not in a, say, unconscious way, being possessed by spirits or impressions or thoughts, forms or whatever, but, but actively develop also with an ethical guidance for how do we want to use this? Do right. we want to be become gurus, have power over people and so, or we do use them for advice and healing and uh, all the good purposes, which is part of Buddhist tradition. So, right. so, so I think that ethical aspect and what do we want with these abilities, that is a very uh, crucial question to ask here. Right. So one of the, one of the main, main practices um, that all um, students of advanced Buddhism, as they get in, as the, these six senses come up, one of the, the, the main practices, best practice is discernment. It is a big, big exercise and it's ongoing. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to six senses, um, six senses can bring forth um, just the basics. How do you live with them? How do you deal with them? How do you um, adapt to them? Mm -hmm. um, they can also be like a gift as well because they can, um, they can be used to protect yourself from um a potential hazard that's coming because you get first insight etc um exactly. the, you know they but the other thing is they also bring issues of spiritual ego where you mm. think that you use your sixth sense mm. to take advantage of people or to manipulate mm. people and, mm. and so that there comes a question of that and that mm. goes into discernment um the other thing that i notice when it comes to these six senses in people and I, I watched the Star Trek series and Deanna Troy's mm -hmm. is constantly, when she is discussing things, she's discussing things as probabilities. I sense this, I sense that. And then you make your own decision. She doesn't ever give anybody mm. for the most part, this is what you need to do. She just gives them, you know, what is she's reading. And then, and then they make the decision of how they're going to work with the situation at hand. But discernment is something that I've noticed 
um, is not practiced very much with six senses in the West. In the East, it's very it's a foundation. Mm. You have to mm. have discernment because mm. um, you know if you get an a extra skill mm. that it could it could be a gift or it could it could it could harm you. And some people they use it and they and it harms them or it backfires and then they never want to mm. see it again. They never want to use it again. You know exactly. they they shut it off. They shut it off mm. because it has caused problems in their life in mm. their relationship. Mm. They shut it off. So mm. with that, here's my question to you. When it comes to like um, the ability to have insight into like like an oracle or a medium or a channeler, there's going to be different perspectives on a, the same issue. Yes. Uh, and, and, and sometimes those perspectives contradict each other. Yes. So how does one, the person given the 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 insight that they have, how do they practice discernment with the information? Mm. Because the information that they tell people could influence people to do things mm. that could not be beneficial to them or everyone else. And then that person, that medium channeler, psychic, whatever you want to call them, now has the karma of giving information and causing you know, an adverse uh, outcome mm. that, you know, had they not said anything. So um, mm. what is what is your opinion when it comes to the the need to discern with the information and what you do of information? Because it, mm. it can create harm. Yes, uh, uh, this very famous Norwegian psychic, I don't expect him to be known these days abroad, but he was quite uh, well known, known in Germany uh, earlier and also in France, uh, now we're speaking about 100 years ago. But he wrote a little book and he takes up these things and he said, you must unconditionally learn to follow your true will and authentic feeling. And um, mm. and yes, so extremely. So you have to be be very aware of yourself. And I think uh, somehow the main uh, aspect. Then we're getting into religious philosophy, really. But the main aspect of religion is the question about meaning. And uh, I think you have a very good compass, a very good guide, if you ask and listen, you and be very honest to yourself uh, about the meaning of what you do. And suddenly you will feel, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you're doing something bad towards another person or some low thing, you will feel that this is this is meaningless this is not mm. good really so uh, i think you have to develop your own compass and be very honest i think that is somehow <laughs> your task as a human being to develop that sensitivity towards because you have the guidance from inside if you listen to it but uh, as we discussed noise both the mental noise and physical noise and ethical noise and you know media wants you in this direction and that direction so you have to be learn to become quite Quiet and and listen, you know. And if you are as practice spiritual, um, uh, you can ask your higher self if that is the right. Or you, if you're a Christian, you can ask God. Uh, you know the deeper meaning in, mm -hmm. in, in in the world, really. So so I think, um, and of course that is not perfect. But well, nothing is perfect. When I go for a walk, I can lose balance and fall. Usually I don't, right. but that can happen, you know. Right. So I have to develop my competence. And also riding a bike is even more difficult, you know. And riding a bike with one wheel is even more difficult, but I can learn it, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so, so to, do, to balance between different things also in the mental uh, uh, world, I think that's, that's a training process you can't escape. If you want to become a violinist, you have to practice and you will make lots of noises and lots of bad sounds, but it will become more and more beautiful the more you practice you know so practice. also we yes practice 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 um and that is that is uh and you, and always have have the feedback circle of listening to what is the result of what you're doing and is your uh, say quality of the relationship with other people is this quality increasing or it's decreasing and so so it's a long long story this but but uh, as i said developing your own compass uh and listening and become more and more sensitive and more and more quiet you know and meditation right. is, a, is a beautiful uh tool there well um Tosha, let me ask you something i'm going to give you some practical uh, examples and, and get your opinion on this because um 
so we know in history, like Stalin and Hitler, for example, and Hitler was mm. very used to using channelers and mediums and psychics to get information and then use that information to um, to encourage um, followers to support the cause because mm. they were using what you would say oracles, channelers, mediums, mm. psychics that had the same had this information. And we know in history that um, that was not good at the very end. But while we were living in it, Hitler was very known for using a lot of this information. And this was the information that was given forth and people believed it. Now, mm -hmm. um, even in, because you're not American, so um, so you're kind of like an unbiased party, okay? <laughs> okay. okay? So I'm going to ask you an American question to the same kind of thing okay. about discernment. So um, there, is, there is a fringe element to Chandler cyclers, cycles, um, psychics and mediums that um, say that they have these channel messages about the former president, Trump, for example. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Being, um, you know, all these wonderful things for humanity as a savior, as a, you know, et cetera, mm -hmm. and just kind of like putting in a pedestal mm -hmm. um, and seeing what they want to see. And then you also have the same, um, you have psychics, mediums, channelers saying the opposite, saying, no, mm. that's going to um, create a lot of discord with the earth, create a lot of imbalance. Mm. So you have, you have channelers, psychics, and mediums mm. having alternate perspectives and they're mm. feeding into the followership, their information that they are supposedly getting through their, their psychic channels. Mm. Same ability, different message. And I noticed this is exactly what's played out when Hitler and Stalin was in office. Mm. Uh, they used the uh, same method. Let's then go back to the old German philosopher Hegel. Uh, Hegel. Um, uh, he said that history develops in a dialectical sense. So you have a thesis, and then you got antithesis, and then you got synthesis. You know. Mm -hmm. So uh, very often you have to. You cannot go directly to a higher level. Uh, you have to go to from one side, say one ditch to the other ditch, and then you can s somehow find the road. So uh, you could say unify those perspectives that say say uh, tr trump for instance then he seems not to be uh, no he is not president anymore so but he didn't seem to be all too ethical to put it that way but perhaps uh, i was reading american newspapers quite a lot because i wanted to understand what's happening in the united states and what i saw was many americans became very clear on their own say ground of uh, values uh, mm -hmm. what is america about is this what america is about and most of them at least in the channels that i was reading uh, said no this is not what america is about so but somehow it, perhaps the americans had been sleeping a bit you know and then came trump for better and worse waking them up and then they have to make a choice and they chose no biden uh, so, so somehow you often have you cannot go directly to a better place you have to go into and see uh, this is for instance set if you are grown up in a say strict christian moral code you know mm -hmm. many uh, i live in the so-called uh, bible belt of norway south of norway mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and many have very strict codes uh, growing up and then you see they're getting uh, uh, youngsters you know and they go out to town and drink quite a lot and uh, mm -hmm. uh, what is uh, <laughs> that kind of lifestyle you know and it's okay. uh, youngsters that's okay Yes. And uh, and then they suddenly found out, well, I don't want to live this way. And then they get back to find, but perhaps not that conservative as they were before, getting, say, a more normal and balanced lifestyle. But without that uh, kind of, uh, say, a couple of years drinking a bit too much and uh, being irresponsible in different ways, they probably would never have reached that kind of state of balance. I know uh, um, the very conservative American Christians, the Amish people, they have some kind of the same uh, because they they were German origin. They have what they call the Amish, the Amish, uh, uh, Amish, yes, Amish, yeah, uh, yes. Um, um, 
and I think they uh, call it uh, rumlaufen, which mm -hmm. is German for means running around, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, for a period, you I don't know their tradition very much, but I think it's some of the, the same what I describe. Uh, describe for a period, you somehow lose the more strict moral code and just, you know, uh, let happens what happens. And then you, you make, have to make a conscious choice, which is then much more valuable than just by routine taking over your parents moral code i think this right, is um, right. some some of the same in america has happened the last years you know because as i said i read quite a lot uh, uh, of americans were going back to the constitution uh, you know and uh, uh, declarance of independence and all they said say um, founding fathers uh, and lincoln uh, you know uh, so finding somehow their own ground of value. So without Trump, that probably would not have been possible to that extent. That is my two cents about this. So perhaps, the, as I said, back to Hegel uh, again, uh, sometimes you cannot go straight to the goal. You have to go to this side and to the opposite side, and then you can find it. Yes. So, so what I'm getting, um, and and clarify for me. So what I'm getting that you're saying is that, I mean, because you have one side um, who's saying this person is ethical, and then you have another side saying, no, that person's not ethical. This person is more ethical than that person. So it's just, everybody is seeing what they want to see. But what mm -hmm. you're saying is um, sometimes in society, they have to pick something that it, um, to see what they don't want. So yes. like, okay, yes. so, so, exactly. so we, and, uh, and we the, picked the, the, one thing, lived with it and realized, oh, that is not what we wanted and mm, we have chosen against it. Exactly. And that's okay. very old. As I say, this is not my scheme of history. That is, uh, that is uh, Hegel's. And, uh, you know, the a great guy of uh, the time of Hegel was Napoleon Bonaparte, the French mm -hmm. emperor who was conquering, uh, trying to take all of Europe, really. He, he was, right. you know, going after England, going after Russia and so. And uh, but Hegel said um, that um, uh, he used the name uh, Weltgeist, that means the world spirit. And uh, he said when Napoleon uh, arrives on his horse, that's the Weltgeist coming, riding, you know. So he felt, uh, and he also said that uh, the Weltgeist, the world spirit, uh, develops um, contra intentional. I must find the English word. Just give me three seconds. Um, well, uh, contra intentionally, uh, paradoxically. So when contrast, Napole we need a contrast. Yes. We're yes, looking, we're yeah, looking for contrast. Okay. Yes, dialectical, you know, and 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 yeah. as I said, he used that perspective already on Napoleon. And I will not say that I know these things, but it seems to be a very fruitful way of say uh, approaching these phenomena. And also in your own life, I have also made, made mistakes, you know. Uh, and mm. but if you are conscious about your mistakes, you learn from them, and you have a better quality. As the, the right. old the old Buddhist saying is no mud no lotus so yeah perhaps, uh, that's true <laughs> so the lotus uh, grows out of the mud and the junk uh yes so perhaps we can through. say it, 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 trump is the mud here and no we are perhaps getting america that is more lotus yeah yeah well that's that's very interesting yeah i've i noticed that interest that interesting dichotomy um in 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 when it comes to psychics mediums and channelers that you have two batches mm -hmm. and they the each batch completely thinks their perspective and the insight they're getting is the highest. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you're saying, what you're saying is um, sometimes we have to discern the bigger picture mm -hmm. and sometimes society needs to have a, like such a polar contrast to know yes. where, where the next best experience is, where, where their solutions mm -hmm. are going to be. And sometimes Sometimes we get into a place where we don't know the next best thing to do to solve mm. our own problems. So mm. we have to throw in like mm. the extreme to see, yes. okay, we definitely yes. know because we have experienced the extreme. We exactly. definitely know that we don't want, for example, Stalin's version mm. of society mm. and the mm. things that he's doing, or even for like Hitler or Mussolini, mm. those societies, 
had some ser- some serious problems at the time that they were going through. But mm. in what they chose to do was the extreme, and through that extreme, they got the contrast, and they knew, okay, mm. we know we don't want that. We know we don't like that. We know we don't like, you know, it, all it, these it's, solutions. It, it's, it's a bit like with the mafia also, because I uh, read some uh, making fun of the Italians and they said uh, because they have, uh, you know, a lot of mafia in, in, in Italy. And um, it, but they also have probably the best, uh, say, detectives uh, uh, mm. to, 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 uh, to say what is called. Um, oh, what? Oh, this English. What is the when a, a <laughs> p- p- police uh, catches a criminal? What is that process called? Investigation. Investigation. They're probably the best, uh, say, mob investigator also in Italy. And some made fun of uh, one of those investigators I saw in an interview, and uh, and they say, yeah, but you, you have lots of mafia. Yes, but then we are extremely trained in how to deal with them also. So that is uh-huh. a part of the, yes. Yeah. And uh, so don't so, hate so, the mafia for. Their purpose well, uh, in that well, lesson. Uh, well, it's a kind of yes in the bigger picture, and that is also, I think, it's the Buddhist uh, perspective on, on karma. If you do something wrong in this life, you, there might be an impulse in your karma to do it better next time around. You know, yeah. so it could be. I I would not say I know these things, but it seems to be a fruitful approach when you're dealing mm-hmm. with things in life you don't like, both in your own life, my own bad decision when I was younger about this and that thing. I could mention several. <laughs> and, uh, and also, yes, and also society's bad decisions about choosing a leader that might be substandard in many respects. Right, right. So basically, you're saying they're just life lessons, and because they're tough life lessons, we learn the yes. most about ourselves and grow the most from those challenging life lessons. If we are aware and present and discerning, it's exactly what you say. We we are learning yeah. that way. Yeah, well, yeah, the the United States is definitely learning a lot. <laughs> yes, I think so. I, I and the world is impressed. learning a lot watching us go through it too. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so as I said, I read quite a lot of American newspapers during the Trump period, and I was very often moved by, say, uh, very serious, say, writers asking about, is this what America is about? No, there must be, and and uh, as I say, referring to the founding fathers yeah. and. and and, and what's created and that the idea of America is extremely inclusive. For instance, uh, um, uh, d- discussions these days are very much about racism, of course, uh, Black Lives Matter and all that kind of things. Yeah, but, um, it's not it's not racism isn't as prom- prominent in many countries where there isn't that much diversity. Mm-hmm, but we yes. have so much diversity and it's all a big melting pot. So it is it is um, an issue that they they're still trying to figure out how to overcome it. Screen frozen here. Yeah. It's become yeah, no, more it's sophisticated. Different. It's become more sophisticated. Racism has mm. become more sophisticated. Yes. But what I felt about, say, uh, the American, say, basic idea about America, uh, it suddenly struck me. It's not a physical area, but it's really an idea. And everybody that subscribes to that idea can become an American. And that's a beautiful vision for a country, really. It's not about... Mm ethnicity or blood or race or color or any of these things is if if you as martin luther king said uh, the uh, the person's character not color of skin or whatever yes. yeah yeah you know this reminds me this this conversation reminds me of um something in buddhism that i was always taught which is to give compassion and unconditional yes. love to people who are going through tough life lessons is because those tough life lessons are um, where they're going to grow, hopefully the most, and where mm. everybody else can grow from watching them grow through it. So the United States as a petri dish and going through all their problems, mm. everybody else is learning mm. from this symphony that mm. has a lot of, you know, loops and turns. Yes, but, yes. Yeah. I, I, for, I just, for, for instance, if, you, if we just look at... Um, at uh, say Second World War, a terrible catastrophe for humanity. But also, it then it was founded the the the, uh, the UN Declaration of Human Rights, for instance, which is mm-hmm. a fantastic document. So I think it is. It seems to be. I think humanity seems to be a slow learner. But uh, <laughs> yeah. 
but we are learning, you know, inching and inching and inching generation for generation. That is, that is a big understatement, Terzin. <laughs> uh, it's it, so it's, true. It's, a, it's an old Roman uh, say, uh, it's called uh, the grinder of God works slowly. Yeah, yeah but you know what, uh, when you get to the other side, it's infinite anyway. So what's the brush? What's the rush? At least if you go really slow learning the life lessons, at least you hopefully learn and you have muscle memory not to create certain experiences mm. that you no longer want to experience. So I would say, I would say in that token, like the Stalin years and the Hitler years and all that, all, you know, Mussolini years, et cetera, all these mm. difficult challenges in humanity and in the country that went through such contrast, um, that they played like muscle memory in our psyche mm. so that mm. we know what not to do again. Mm. Like, oh, that reminds mm. me so much of exactly. this regime or that regime. It triggers some kind of of, uh, mm. of commonality to a regime mm. that I'm not interested in. So we have mm. so much cultural muscle memory to yes. um, these, these types of regimes that um, hopefully humanity never forgets these muscle memory mm. life lessons, mm. but mm. they do play interesting um, life lessons for humanity mm. to grow mm. from. It, but mm. it is, but it, it is difficult while you're living through them because it's yes. hard to have discernment. Yes, so, it is. So when you are writing but, these books on these six senses and, and when you're going through this, hard to have discernment and people are trying to tap into their higher self and trying to tap into the intuition, tap into source mm, mm. and people are getting different contrasting views. What, it, what, do you, um, what do you recommend so they can kind of cope with it? You know, as I said, uh, the inner compass, you know, because I, I am very skeptical about gurus and even good gurus can become bad gurus because of your relationship with them. Because mm -hmm. if, if uh, uh, Khalil Gibran, you probably know him, he was a Lib Lebanese writer. He wrote a very famous book called The Prophet. And he said, mm -hmm. if a teacher is really wise, he or she will lead you to your own uh, wisdom threshold. Uh, well, Hitler in Mein Kampf. He was, he put himself as a prophet. He yes. had this vision and he had yes. this. Is, yes. And, and I think I read Mein Kampf, uh, mein Kampf and it had mm. over a thousand words where it talked about Christ and God and all that kind of stuff mm. and Christianity. Mm. And so it was just that constant drumming of, um, mm. in Mein Kampf of this is from God, mm. this is from source, this is what mm. we need to do mm. to get mm. to the next best experience. Mm. So um, he used that angle of prophecy in his book and yes, yes, yes. indoctrinated a lot of people. So we have to be oh, mindful. Yes. The sermon is big in public yes. times. And I also have read quite a lot of, about American modern history from the hippie times, you know, and also do have all these uh, gurus uh, with uh, lots of sexual exploitation and tax mm -hmm. evasion and, uh, you know, all this kind of, and pe because people, you know, uh, you can be, become impressed by, uh, oh, and the, he has got these telepathic abilities, you know, and she has uh, remembers her earlier lives and all that. And because you are a weak person, you feel weak, you have been through a crisis, for instance, I'm you know, loved one has died or there has been a divorce or whatever you know you mm. you feel you you need some signals to to steer after and and then you can become a victim of this and uh, uh, that is very very uh, dangerous so uh, yeah. i would su suggest uh, you, uh, I, I am very uh, you know some of those gurus have quite good writing books and and you can learn quite a lot of them but but your relationship with them it can easily lead to some kind of uh, explicit or implicit is it uh, power right. abuse? So, so trust yourself and trust your own inner guidance and ask uh, your higher self or your subconscious mind or God or the, the source within yourself, not within another person. Right, right. Yeah, it is an exercise in discernment. That's like the number one um, practice in Buddhism for, um, for students of, of higher spiritual experiences is discernment, discernment, discernment. Yes. Because um, otherwise you would you could create yourself unbalanced energy, unbalanced mm. experiences that you're going to have to account for and be responsible for because they'll continue to manifest in your life. So mm. um, that that one I could do a whole episode of just discernment. Um, yes. Okay, so 
back to the fun <laughs> stuff. <laughs> back to yes. the fun <laughs> stuff about yes, okay. Star Trek The Next Generation. So mm-hmm. in Star Trek The Next Generation TV series, Amanda Rogers is a Starfleet intern who plans to study biology with Dr. Crusher. However, mm-hmm. it's revealed with her budding supernatural six senses that she can control that. And she's part of what they call the Q Collective. So um, what are your recommend? We already talked about your recommendations for humanity um, going into more into the six senses as mm-hmm. they um, elevate their spiritual um uh, elevate their spirituality, but what are your thoughts on, let's say all the humanity get to the part where they have leveled up so much of their consciousness and they have learned to deal with all these six senses um, that we ourselves become a collective, a higher energy collective. Mm. What are your thoughts in that? And a very interesting perspective. Uh, as I say, the psychic advisor I uh, I use from time to time. She she uh, has that perspective. You're saying uh, you're discussing there, and also Rudolf Steiner, uh, this Austrian, and in fact is also a great Danish spiritual philosopher called Martinius. He's mm-hmm. made. Uh, uh, you know him. It says he's not very fam- famous outside Denmark, I think, but um, he he get a kind of uh, cosmic consciousness experience, and he wrote uh, a book of life, you know, in uh, tome after tome after tome mm-hmm. after tome. Uh, and some friends of mine are, are finding very much meaning in uh, his perspectives, you know, that at some certain point the whole planet will be lifted up to a higher spiritual level. <sighs> It's a, it's a very it's a sympathetic. Concept. I understand this concept. Um, it's yes. a matter of timing whenever yes. we decide to grow up, mm-hmm. you know, yes. and like you yes. said, humanity is a slow learner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, if we, but if more and more decide yes. to grow up and mm. um, elevate our consciousness and these six senses become part of every day, we can become a hypothetical <laughs> yes. collective. Um, let, me, let, me, let me explain further. So the Q collective in Star Trek Mm -hmm. Um, is a race of extra dimensional beings who have the ability Mm -hmm. to manifest anything within time, space, and reality. They are Mm -hmm. seemingly omnipotent and they acknowledge that humanity will eventually exceed their capability in the future as Mm -hmm. much of a slow learner that we are. So Mm -hmm. they assign a character called Q um, to find out as much about humanity and report to his collective. So I bring this concept up in um, in Star Trek TV series because it relates to Buddhism. Because in Buddhism, this would resemble a collective of what we call ascended masters, which are mm, Buddhas mm, and Bodhisattvas mm, that travel Bodhisattva. the multi- mm. yeah that travel the multiverse after mm. overcoming samsara or the holographic matrix. Mm. Um, and basically it would be like all the master teachers they've overcome mm. and they have dominion over form over the matrix so mm. they you know they kind of just meander through creation at will but mm. this is what we call ascended masters so like yeshua buddha Kuan Yin, mm. tara mm. you know mm. All, mm. all these master teachers that that um, travel the multiverse so i found that interesting parallel in star it's very trek interesting. Mm. that they have this collective that can basically have mm. dominion over creation and mm. that in that tv series they are interested in the slow learning um mm. humanity that eventually mm. exceeds them mm. so um so that, you've that, read material that says the same thing yes in western esotericism that is also a perspective you know and and therefore I- I- Ideally speaking, if you enter, uh, say, a magical uh, lodge, uh, if it's a good lodge, that way will work uh, consciously and uh, very, say, um, uh, in that direction. Uh, it's a kind of what I don't know the English word for it, but uh, a kind of uh, enhanced uh, uh, development of humanity. You can, because when you work, uh, 
uh, in a say lodge uh, in the same direction you can generate more spiritual uh, energy you know uh, yeah, they even make kind of group soul they call it egregore you know you can develop mm. that yes uh, so uh, it's it's the same perspective that uh, so but what will happen then that that is very uh, say enigmatic because because if you say look at our natural history uh, I will not quote Steiner here because he believes also the natural history is a spiritual history. But if you go to, back to primordial sea, for instance, there was small microbes and, uh, you know, uh, one cell organism. And we have come to this fantastic complex organism like we are, you know, mm. uh, increased uh, consciousness, increased level of consciousness uh, a million times from the first uh, amoeba in the uh, primordial sea. And what mm. will be the next after humanity? But perhaps something that will transcend us in, 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 in a way that we are not able to imagine you know it's it's a, it's extremely big very interesting but i'm not competent to answer that question <laughs> yeah it we, we it's it's uncharted we don't know what is hap what's yes. going to happen to all yes. these people because i know in buddhism you know throughout buddha's history which goes back to many many of the philosophies also go back to different philosophies in asia Mm -hmm. um and also the vedas of hinduism yes, which go back over seven thousand years so yes. a lot of the some of the croppings carry on and we just keep on studying consciousness the effects of consciousness we keep on studying the matrix and reality and mm. oftentimes when people start leveling up their spirituality and coming into these dif different six senses there's, we can do isolated cases where let's say a family has a child who has extrasensory abilities they give us the monastery the mm. child learns how to deal and live with it and then they're fine and that's been a normal case throughout history mm. but when mass amounts of society mm. start coming into a spiritual crisis mm. and start going through a spiritual sixth sense growth spurt at mm. seemingly same chunks of time mm. it's a little chaotic mm. <laughs> it's it a is. little chaotic and we don't necessarily know <clears throat> um where that's going to go or how we're going to address such a mass amount of people mm. coming into mm. they're going to be they're going to be like i don't care what's going on in current affairs i just want to stop hearing everybody's voices mm. Mm. you know i just want to stop seeing everybody's auras all over the place i'm getting like colorblind here or, or whatever <laughs> yes <laughs> or, you know i mean i mean these six, these six senses can go on and on and they mm. can be they can put them into their own personal um reality crisis because like how do i live my reality with this new you know mm. uh these new elevated level of consciousness and the extra ability to see everything so mm. if this starts happening on a mass scale mm. um you know kind of like the uh the 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 hotline for different crises there will need to be a spiritual hotline for crises like oh, hello yes. What yes. are you dealing with? Oh, I see auras everywhere. I hear everybody mm. talking. I know what's going to happen. So I'm afraid of going anywhere because I know what's going to oh, happen. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, it goes I, on I, and I, on. So mm. how do you advise a mm. lot of people going through similar things? Mm. Mm. Uh, I talk a bit about that in my book. Uh, I uh, the, the very concrete advice I said that you should probably in the Western tradition, you should probably say seek a uh, transpersonal therapist you know to discuss when some a person that is both open say, to psychological things and normal things and open to the spiritual perspectives you know uh, i think a dialogue uh, i will tell from my own experience i met a, a gestalt therapist and she was also kind of master i would say you know and uh, mm -hmm. of course she was very human in many ways so uh, <laughs> it was not that but uh, i felt that our dialogue somehow uh, made us both grow in a way and also it balanced me because then you get a specific person Person. you're not just out on your own uh, trip being an astral tramp in your own high vision yeah, yeah. so it's very uh, as i said feed the dog walk in the nature have a serious dialogue with an other human being and uh, we cannot know everything about the future i know as i said i'm open to this perspective and pers perhaps a total transformation of the human race that could happen uh, but uh, one of the buddhist perspectives is you probably know that story uh, 20 times as uh, uh, good as me but um, there was this guy coming to buddha and saying uh, 
um, uh, 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 asking lots of questions about reincarnation and blah blah blah, blah and so on. and and. Um, and Buddha answered, uh, you are like a person who's been shot with an arrow in his chest. But mm. before he takes out this arrow, he wants to know who made this arrow. What did his family come from? What did were the uh, occupations and mm -hmm. what relations to the neighboring city and all that. And, so on. and, and Buddha said, I cannot help you with that, but I can help you take out the arrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, yes. <laughs> so some, I think in these big philosophical questions, we must be very practical also. As I said, a good mm -hmm. dialogue with a serious other person, you know, having your best interest at and heart. He's not going to exploit a... you. That's the other thing. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, so and, many people get exploited when that's they the, are the, in a spiritual... That's the thing again. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, should I be, always uh, advise... The, this could be a kind of danger signs on the, the guru store, you know. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, guru activity is dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, you should trust your own inner guidance for things, you know, and cultivate that and increase your sensitivity. Do your meditation and, you know, uh, but there is you have to put in the work there, I think. Yeah, I, I, that, that's really good sound advice, because as I see more and more people go through their own um, spiritual crisis and I, I will say this um in buddhism none of this is because of the devil okay <laughs> it mm, yes, yes. Mm. It, it, this is just a normal aspect of raising consciousness is a growth spurt yes so that's all it is um mm -hmm. and everybody has you know different abilities when they grow like some teenagers mm. shoot up a foot two feet you know very mm. very quickly and then they stumble and and they fall and everything yes, yes, so yes. they have to learn to deal with their new height or mm. some people are able to run faster than other people mm. um, as they grow up and they have an advantage and they also have to have discernment um, yes. not to not to go and take everything and you know share mm. so there's a lot of there's a lot to learn and adapt to when the, it comes the, to this the most famous psychic in norway uh, today he's called snorsamanen uh, he lives in a small town also and uh, he's extremely psychic i'm uh, and also a great healer he has been visited by 40,000 people you know mm -hmm. that's quite a lot uh, and he never takes any money for, from them uh, he he thinks his gift uh, his gift is a gift from god as should be shared for free you know that's his perspective very noble and uh, but he said also it's uh, it's a miracle he has not been totally uh, mad because of uh, mm -hmm. when all meeting all these people uh, he takes in the suffering you know and so when uh, yes so yeah. uh, uh, yes uh, and uh, he gave um, a friend of mine uh, his sister went to this guy and uh, he put his uh, healing hands on her shoulders and suddenly he said Oh, he's a terrible uh, uh, kind of guy, uh, your father, isn't he? And, you know, he, he could see. So he was the, wearing, uh, she was wearing yes, her father yes, trauma yes, on her shoulders. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. yes. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, uh, I cannot go into detail about it. There's written books and also made films about this guy. He's really impressive and very yeah. modest. On Yes. Uh, and he works on his, um, uh, he is now 95 years old. Yeah. So, <laughs> Energy healing yes. is a very common sixth sense that many of people as they get into higher consciousness, um, mm. have the ability to do. Mm. So, um, this but, this, a, but, but my point was also there's also challenge in suffering, uh, and uh, because, it, as I said, he tunes into other people's sufferings, mm -hmm. and 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 of course, uh, sometimes he get visions about the the impending death and all that kind of things, you know. So yeah. it's hard hard to bear. It's hard. It's, yes, it's hard to take. So, it's hard to you know. So yeah. So uh, and again, so, people think it's people think as they raise consciousness and they go higher into these higher frequencies that this is all fun and dandy. Yes, exactly. At first, and yes. then it becomes a blessing in disguise that they're trying to figure mm. out how to, um, how to live with, mm. because just like the judgment you were talking about, it's hard to see images, feel the mm. images and they're not pleasant and they're not. Mm. Your so you have to learn exactly. boundaries. Boundaries is a very uh, and, uh, big thing. Uh, uh, that is very big thing, psychologically speaking. And also, at a perspective, I read uh, just a book from a uh, Canadian. She, I think mm -hmm. her family uh, originally is from Iran. Uh, she comes from a Sufi tradition. Yeah. And uh, she said uh, that the perspective you should have is not, is this fun or joyful or pleasant, but is it meaningful? And then you mm -hmm. can, of course, uh, because suffering 
for instance, a, a friend of mine, he is dead now, but he was a doctor working in Africa for many years. And of course, he saw lots of suffering, but he also mm -hmm. felt it was very deeply meaningful to be help, able to help uh, very many people, not everybody, of course, but, uh, you know, so so I think a question of meaning, because what also my impression from American culture, it can sometimes be a bit too much about fun. Things should be fun all the time, you know, right, uh, but right. life is not Disneyland, as we have learned you know, through the pandemic, you know, so many yeah. of us. Yes. Uh, Everybody's so, learned so much about themselves, I tell you, from the pandemic. They really brought yes. out who they are. And that is back to your question about the political issues again, because uh, the pandemic is not a good thing, but we can learn a lot and become clear of your own uh, own values through the pandemic. So that be, yeah. becomes a, a very good example of just what we talked about earlier. On the yeah, program. yeah. The pandemic has been a a life lesson, and it has brought so much contrast in people's lives, so yes. that they can see, oh, mm. this is this is how I react to this. This mm. is how I mm. feel about this. Wow, mm. you know. So it's. It, it has definitely been a big mirror for people. Yes, it has been. Um, of course, on individual perspective, uh, for those who have died, you know, what should we say? Uh, depends on what perspective you have. If you believe in karma, that probably would probably be part of their karma and bigger uh, meaning in the, in the higher yeah. perspective. If you don't have that perspective, of course, that is a, a, a problem. Uh, you have just then just to accept this as, as uh, say, a tragic necessity of life. But anyway, uh, humanity as a whole seem to learn something from the pandemic and we have never before uh, i will not uh, i'm not a anti-vaxxer you know i believe in vaccines if they were developed in a sound and, and ethical way um so so i think also never before in history have uh, humanity as a collective uh, acted so fast to develop uh, vaccines so that is also uh, okay we can do this if we really want to you know so that is also yeah. a very learn learnful experience well the other thing well, well the thing about the about the the quick pace of vaccine creation and i know there's news stories that they have been doing research for 50 years before they got this and etc however um the fast adoption and speediness of mm. it um the thing I found very interesting is, yes, we can we can collectively work together to get an answer very, very quickly and mm. um, get things out as quickly as possible that we have not done before in history. But now it's starting to look like business, like some um, some vaccine makers won't share their uh, formulas to poor countries who need it because yes. they can't pay for it. So then so now it's not, not about the, helping humanity. Now it's about no, 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 back to the ego dollar. Exactly. Exactly. So that will be the next challenge. How to meet this in an ethical way with discernment, as you said. So. Yes. Yeah, so new questions, so, everybody, new questions. Everybody, for and, and uh, I will uh, also uh, a Jewish philosopher, I liked very much Martin Buber, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I and though he made his book in the 1920s. And he mm -hmm. said, I will, uh, I ha always have to try uh, to uh, translate uh, simultaneously inside my head, so it's difficult, but no, I have to think it in Norwegian and try to speak it in English. Uh, he says um, that to find is not. Uh, the end of the road it's it's ever present uh, ever present the middle you know so mm, as you it's said a journey it's, the it's journey. a journey and journey and and and, and a never-ending journey you know yeah 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 mm. yeah it's so the journey the, the journey yes. is what we, we is when we learn and grow the most yes yes exactly also yeah. you know i have been through that's a, what consciousness rather, wants seems to be that right and uh, mm -hmm. that is also now i quote tolkien you know lord of the rings uh <laughs> but uh, uh, isn't this Frodo says to gandalf you know uh, uh he didn't uh, i don't like these times uh, and uh, gandalf says also that he did do not like these times either but we we are not the masters we cannot choose the times we want to live it you just have to do the best of it in a way yeah 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 well let me ask you this let, do you have a last message for people who want to build the fifth dimensional society a higher vibe society what last message do you have for people as they navigate these <clears throat> turbulent times of life lessons yeah, that's a very good thing. Uh, two aspects. Uh, one is, as I said, uh, learn to be more sensitive to what's going on inside yourself, uh, mm -hmm. to, to be a very, very keen observer and always uh, 
try to establish constructive and respectful dialogue. So, mm -hmm. as I said, uh, listen to yourself and listen to the exchange with others, you know, have a focus on that more than your own big visions, you know, because then you can be lost in, in your own ego trip, spiritual uh, astral traveling. So, so become very grounded in your own, say, sense of self and discern uh, closely. And also, uh, for me, uh, the dialogue has been very much a saving factor, you know, so, so listen to yourself and listen to others. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's perfectly well said. It it is definitely an interesting journey. Well, Terje, thank you for offering such an insightful book. Uh, I'm gonna put your your the links to your Amazon page. Um, there let you go. <laughs> and, and if you could bring it up really quick, let me show everybody. So if you a lot of people are familiar with my book series, Buddhist Mandalas, Sacred Geometry is all over the beginning of that. See that there's the vortex. That, that circle part, that's the flower of life. That's the vortex. Uh, that's, a, that's a toroidal field. And then he has the um, the eye in the center. Um, mm -hmm. That's the, you know, the heart. And so anyways, sacred geometry is all over the, the front cover of that. So people who really love sacred geometry can kind of um, get hypnotized into uh, that was that some of the idea. Uh, sh shall I be allowed to see the title of it, uh, read the title of it so people will a know the title? A short history. So for people, it's on, you can go to his website, his um, Amazon page, his author's page, just click on the um, author's link and it'll pull up all of his metaphysical books. But this one is a short history of nearly everything paranormal, our secret powers, telepathy, clairvoyance, and there's, can you pull it up a little bit? The like book? that? Oh, and like precognition that's... and precognition. Yes, precognition. So, and it's and, a nice thick book too. It just got you. a couple it, accolades it, too, didn't it, it? It's it's five hundred and thirty pages, and it's just won a Nautilus Silver Award uh, a few days ago. So, uh, uh, I saw also one of the other silver winners this year was a Nobel laureate in chemistry. So, I was quite proud to be part of that club. You know. Yeah, that's, that's a good club <laughs> to be in. So, your paranormal books are up in the caliber of a Nobel chemist. Well, uh, <laughs> well, not, uh, but uh, at <laughs> least modern. yes. We're part of the same uh, your group uh, in a way. Yes, <laughs> sitting at the same round table. Well, yes, it, it, exactly. It, well, it was it was lots and lots of fun. I'm very um, excited to see how humanity evolves with these six senses, and maybe you and I will have a follow up in um, a couple years, and maybe we'll have even more interesting things because more people so. are going to be coming into this. So, like I said earlier, yes. that, that mass spiritual crisis. Oh, it's going to happen, and it already is. Mm, so. Mm. Yeah. So anyways, you guys, Amazon.com, look up Terje, which is T-E-R-J-E. -E, that's how you spell his first name. And then G as in G for this middle name. And then Simonson, S-I-M-O-N-S-E-N. -S -E so with that, thank you to our listeners for listening to another enlightening conversation. Until next time, blessings. Namaste. <laughs>